So for 18, it is negative 24 minus 8x equals 12y. And 1 plus 5 ninths y equals negative 7 eighteenths x. You guys know I'm not a fan of fractions either. But even before we deal with the fractions, if we're being asked to solve by elimination, what form should these be in? They are not in standard form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite them in standard form. The negative 8x stays. The 12y is positive and on the right side of the equal sign, we need to move it to the left. So what's going to happen? It'll be a negative 12y. And the negative 24 has to move to the right side of the equation. So it's going to become a positive 24. Same is true with the second equation. It's not in standard form. The 5 ninths y stays, but the other two things are going to switch. So I'm going to rewrite this as 7 eighteenths x because the negative 7 eighteenths is going to be added plus 5 ninths y equals negative 1. Y negative 1? I have to subtract it to move it to the other side. Okay, now, the second equation has fractions. What can we do to get rid of the fractions? Do you remember? I'm going to multiply by 18 also. Okay, so why am I multiplying by 18? Because 18 is the common denominator. If I do 18 times 7 divided by 18, I get 7x. If I do 18 times 5, I think I got 90. I did this this morning. 18 times 5, 90, divided by 9, gives me 10y equals negative 18. So this equation has gone from being this not in standard form with fractions to standard form with fractions. And then we use the common denominator to multiply through and clear the denominators. Now, the problem is we're being asked to eliminate. And now I have negative 8x and positive 7x, negative 12y and positive 10y. Do you want to clear the x term or the y term? Clear the y term, okay? I am going to turn both y terms into 120. I'm going to make this negative 120 and this positive 120 because I'm just going to multiply each of them by what it takes to, do you see what I'm trying to do to get the opposites? So I'm going to multiply everything here by 12. 12 times 7 is 84x plus 120y is equal to negative 216. I did not do that in my head. I solved these this morning and I can see my work. Just in case you thought I was amazing at this. I even multiplied with the calculator 12 times 7 in second period. Honestly, I never really learned my sevens times tables that great. Okay, I need to multiply this one by 10 because I want to get a negative 120y so I can ev eliminate it. So this whole thing I'm going to rewrite down here. 10 times negative 8x is going to get me negative 80x minus 120y equals 240. It's a lot of work. Stupid fractions, right? Now, I'm going to take these two equations and I'm going to add them together. 84x minus 80x gives me 4x. Positive 120y minus 120y, 0, that's the eliminated part, is equal to 24. After all that work, x equals 6. 
Isn't that crazy? There has to be an easier way. You can do this using the graphing calculators, but it's a lot of work there too. So now I'm going to take this x and I'm going to go plug it back into one of my original equations. You guys know me well. I'm not choosing the second equation because I'd have to deal with fractions again. I'm going to choose the first equation. Negative 24 minus 8 times 6 equals 12y. That becomes negative 24 minus 48 equals 12y. These two combined get me negative 72 equals 12y. If I divide both sides by 12, I get negative 6 equals y. So my xy pair is 6 comma negative 6 after all that work. They are. Seems appropriate after all that work. Okay, and I was also asked to do number 24. Let me guess, it has fractions. Okay, so this time I'm going to expect you guys to kind of help talk me through it since we've just done this. Negative 5 sevenths minus 11 sevenths x equals negative y. Not in standard form. 2y equals 7 plus 5x. Also not in standard form. Okay, I'm going to reverse things a little bit. The first time we did this, I moved everything into standard form first, but this one, its common denominator is the same thing, isn't it? So I think it's probably easier just to multiply it by the seven now and then rewrite it in standard form. So we're gonna get seven times five divided by seven gives us negative five. Minus 11x equals seven, negative 7y. And now I'm going to move things so that they're in the right places. Negative 11x plus 7y equals 5. If I'm moving them to the opposite side, it just changes their sign, right? This one is going to be negative 5x plus 2y equals five or 7. I think we should get rid of the y on this one too. Because we can turn one of those into negative 14 and the other into positive 14. If we had to try to do the x's, we'd end up with like 55 as a common, and that just, it's getting big. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2, and I think I'm going to do it by negative 2 and make that my negative 1. And then I'm going to multiply this equation by 7, because what I'm looking at is that middle term, I want to get a coefficient that's opposites of each other, right? Negative 2 times 11, negative 11 is going to get me 22x minus 14y equals negative 10. Quick check. Thumbs up if you're with me so far. It's a lot of steps, but you're understanding what we're doing, yes? Okay. Second equation. Negative 5 times positive 7 is going to get me negative 35x. 2y times 7, 14y, equals 49. Now that I've got a term I can eliminate, I'm going to combine these. 22 and negative 35 is going to get me negative 13x. Negative 14y, positive 14y, eliminated, equals 39, divided by negative 13. x equals negative 3. And then we go back to our original equations. Which equation should we choose to plug the x into? I agree. Second. 
2y equals 7 plus 5 times negative 3. I got negative 4. Seven minus 15 gives us negative eight. Negative eight divided by two gives us negative four. 